here and it's very exciting. I am at my new friend's house. His name's Martin and he's employing me for the day to aquascape this Aquascaper 900 system from Evolution Aqua. Some of you may have seen the vlog that I recorded at Aquarium Gardens that Martin was actually inspired by a very strong aquascape by Dave, the owner there, in another Aquascaper 900. Martin was really keen to use this as inspiration for his layout. So we're gonna use a similar variety of plants, not all identical and the hardscape's not identical. Really excited to take you through the whole journey, the whole kind of process step by step. Really hope you enjoy it. Let's dive in. Okay, first things first, let's install our substrate. In this case, we're using Tropica Aquarium Soil. Regular viewers to the channel will know all about this product. For those that don't, it is a proven performer. I've used this in dozens of aquascapes over the years. It feeds the plants with nutrients to the roots. It also helps to lock in nutrients from the water column. It helps to buffer the pH and it lowers the KH slightly, lowers the hardness slightly to make a really nice environment, healthy environment for the fish and the plants and the shrimp, etc. Also a great home for bacteria and it has a very kind of porous, uh, quite a light structure, so it allows for easy root penetration. So we're going to be using three nine litre bags in here. This is the normal type. Tropica also produce a powder type, which is a finer grain, but we're going to use the normal grain today. So three nine litre bags, 27 litres in total, and we'll slope the soil towards the rear. This helps to create an enhanced sense of depth. Okay, substrate's installed. Now it's time to do one of my favourite processes of aquascaping, the hardscaping. So when I talk about hardscaping, I mean the wood and stones. We're creating a nature aquarium style layout today. So we're using natural components, natural wood, natural rocks. And I've got some beautiful examples here. We've got more pieces, but I just thought I'd show you one piece of each. This is... I think it's river wood. I'll, I'll leave a, a title at the bottom of the screen right now uh, to confirm, uh, but beautiful. From Aquarium Gardens, they have a, a great selection of hardscape materials there. But I really love the character, all natural kind of pieces. None, none of it's been kind of sawn off like you do get with a lot of pieces of wood. So it looks really natural, twisty, turny, real character to it. And then a very distinct element to the aquascape that we're using as inspiration from Aquarium Gardens was the use of these fine twigs. So these are actually uh, supplied uh, in bags. I think there's probably about 20 or 30 pieces of these in each bag. So we can use these for detailing work, probably glue them together maybe, or just insert them in appropriate places. But yeah, really excited to use this. Never actually used this before, so. Let's see how we get on with that. And then finally, some beautiful rocks. This is Millennium Stone. So quite similar to Syriou Stone or Mini Landscape Rock. Just has more of a kind of rounded appearance. And I think actually these pieces have got arguably a better character. So much detailing there, which just gives you extra kind of aesthetic impact when you look at the aquascape. If you imagine just having like a flat piece of slate or a flat boulder, it's nowhere near as characterful. So this is an important lesson. When you're choosing your hardscape, choose the most sort of interesting pieces you can. And don't be afraid to hoard hardscape. So every time you go to a new shop or a new store, have a look at their hardscape selection. Even if you just buy one piece, take it home with you and you can maybe use that in a future aquascape. Uh, but make the most of these opportunities. Every time you see new hardscape materials, you know, get one piece that you really, really love and eventually you'll get a really great collection. So that's the hardscape materials. Now it's time to come up with a layout. We'll use a very similar kind of composition to what Martin enjoyed at Aquarium Gardens. So I'll try my best to come up with something good. So that's the main hardscape composition installed. Relatively straightforward. I used the Aquascaper 900 at Aquarium Gardens for inspiration, as you can see. We've gone for a distinct kind of U-shape composition here. So we're gonna plant with foreground carpeting plants around the foreground here, and then through this central pathway, 
big stem plants in the rear and then epiphyte plants around the hardscape. Next, I'm going to attach these twigs. It's important to do that next rather than after planting, otherwise the plants will get in the way. And I think it's worth talking about hardscape in more detail and why it's really important to create a impactful hardscape composition. It is the backbone of the aquascape. If we start off with a really strong hardscape, we can quite easily create a strong aquascape. Conversely, if we started off with a weak hardscape composition, so if we just use maybe three small stones, it's going to look weak, not impactful at all, and you're going to really have to rely on the plants and the plant growth to create that impact. So just from an ease and practical point of view, really focus on number one, selecting the right hardscape, and then number two, positioning it in an appropriate manner. Okay, so that's the hardscape complete. I have to say, I'm really happy with it. Martin is thrilled. It's the first time I've ever used this kind of technique with the fine twigs and it really gives it a new kind of level of detail and sort of naturalistic appearance and yeah I think I'm a bit of a fan actually I might start using this in my scapes at home let me know what you think in the comments so I've wedged some pieces of the twig in to hopefully kind of stay submersed without floating kind of in between the stones and the wood and I've also super glued some pieces as well so we'll give it 10 minutes or so to dry I am going to have to prepare all of the plants next, so that's a good opportunity for the glue to fully dry then, hopefully. Okay, so I've prepared all of the foreground carpeting plants, and also these are going to be used as carpeting plants to go through the centre of the scape to create a pathway effect. So we'll talk about the Helanthium tenellum green. This is the fastest grower, so this will potentially need to be kept in check to stop it from smothering all of the other carpeting plants. This is an easy category plant from Tropica. Then we have the Marsalea crenata, a much slower growing plant, medium category, so it leads a little bit more nutrition and CO2. Then we have Glossostigma. I haven't actually used this for years, so this is a, a fast carpeting plant in the advanced category, so we'll definitely need more CO2, more light and more nutrition, which we've got in this system. This is actually quite a fast grower once it gets established can go a little bit leggy if it has poor nutrition or, or lighting so and CO2, so that, that's a good kind of indicator plant. Then we have Monte Carlo, Micranthum and Monte Carlo. This is what I've got most of. Uh, this is going to form the majority of the carpet and another kind of easy stroke medium plant will definitely benefit from CO2. doesn't actually need CO2, but you'll absolutely get the best results if you do use it. And then finally, we've got Eleocaris and Sicularis mini, a medium category plant, kind of medium growth rate, and this is going to be planted kind of in between all the other plants. So the idea is to kind of blend the textures, plant the Glosso and the Marsalea towards the front, and then the Monte Carlo towards the rear. This is going to give us a forced perspective because the larger textures at the front, followed by the finer textures at the back, actually help to make the tank again look deeper than it really is. So this combined with sloping the soil is really going to enhance this uh, sense of depth. So I'll plant those now, we'll do another time lapse because we love them so much and then we'll move on to the other plants. Okay so we've planted the foreground plants, a mixture of Marsalea crenata, Eleocaris acicularis mini, Micranthum and Monte Carlo, uh, Helanthium talonum and Glossostigma alatinoides. We've got this beautiful foreground and then this central kind of pathway. Next, I'm going to prepare some Cryptochrony albida brown. This is going to just be planted around the stone areas. And then, real special plant, Hydrocotyl verticalata. This really made an impact with me and with uh, Martin in the Aquascopa 900 scape at Aquarium Gardens. It just added a real kind of nice accent, different texture, different colour. Reminds me of like little mushrooms popping up in a meadow and I think it's a great choice, so really looking forward to using this. I have to say, I don't think I've ever used it in one of my own aquariums. So again, maybe that's something to consider for the future. Let me know if you've tried this. It's actually regarded as an advanced plant, so we'll definitely need CO2 and good lighting to get the best out of it. Uh, time for another time lapse. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so I've prepared the stem plants. We've got this beautiful Rotala palustris here, which will turn a bright red colour. Then we have some Rotala rotunda folia. 
This can potentially go a red color, depending on the lighting. It probably go more like an, a greeny orange color. Then we have Rotala green, which will definitely stay green. And finally, Cryptocorani willisii. I'll plant the crypts just around the rocks and the base of the wood again. And then the stems, I'm gonna plant them in individual bunches, but there'll be some crossover as well to enhance this kind of natural texture and color that I want to achieve. It's worth noting that the stems have been grown out of water in the greenhouses, so the, the leaf shape is actually round at the moment. In fact, the Rotala rotunda folia, that's where the name comes from, rotunda folia, round leaf. Uh, as it adapts to its underwater growth form, that, those leaves will become elongated and more needle-like and the colours will change according to the conditions in the aquarium. Okay, so we've planted the background stems, the Cryptocorani willisii. Now it's time to attach our epiphytes. We've got some bulbitis, some good old trident fern and some buca philandra. So I think there's plenty of spaces just to wedge these plants in. I don't think we need to use super glue but we will be gluing some moss in later and then it'll be ready to be filled with water. So very exciting. Almost there. Last step is to glue our moss. This is Christmas moss, Vesicularia Christmas from Tropica, medium category plant. So we'll do best with CO2 and good nutrition. Really easy to prepare. Just remove the whole portion and then separate it into 10 or so individual clumps. And then what I'll do is just put little spots of the super glue. We use the gel type so it doesn't run on uh, strategic positions on the wood and then literally glue on our portions. Simple as that. Okay, guys, there we go. We're fully planted. Super happy with it so far. We're going to fill up with water now. I am a little bit concerned that some of the twigs that I try to glue or position in around the stones and the bigger wood are going to float. So if they do, uh, we'll just take them out and then I'll reinsert them once the tank is full up. Not really a problem. Fill up quite slowly and then it'll be a case of switching on the filter, getting the CA2 on, all the equipment's already fitted. We'll talk a little bit about the equipment and the maintenance that's going to be up and coming over the next month or so. And then it'll be time to say cheerio. And yeah, let's get it filled and see how it looks. Okay, whilst the tank is filling up, using my special red colander. We're pumping it in actually directly from the utility room kitchen sink. We're using a Wise submersible pump and that goes through 12 meters or so of clear hose straight into here. So we use a mixer tap to get the right temperature around about 24 Celsius. Very simple way. And then to remove the water for a water change, we get the end of the hose and then just literally siphon it out of the aquarium. I've talked about this technique a few times on my channel. Uh, maybe it's time to do a complete video dedicated to that system because it is a really great system of changing water. So let's take a look at the equipment in a bit more detail. Starting off with the lighting, this is the Twinstar 900S, designed to fit a 90 centimetre open top tank. It's a really sleek unit. Moving on to the filtration, we've got the Awaze Biomaster Thermo 600 with the quick release pre-filter and inbuilt heater. Great filters, been using these for a few years now. And then we've got the CO2 system running. This is a CO2 art regulator attached to a two kilogram fire extinguisher with a solenoid set to about two or three bubbles per second. We'll use a CO2 drop checker later to keep a constant kind of eye on the CO2 levels and I'll take Martin through that. We will be using a auto doser for liquid fertilizers. Martin's gonna be using the TNC complete and a D&D P1 uh, doser, which is controllable by your smartphone. I use this on my home aquarium in my Aquascaper 1200. Really, really helpful. Martin works away a lot from home, so it's a really useful way to make sure your plants are getting fed every day, which is what we do in this kind of system. So for the first month, we're going to really have to be doing lots of water changes. For the first week, a daily water change of about I say at least 50%. I like to do a bit more, maybe 75%. And then for the second week, we do that water change every other day. For the third week, every third day. And then after four weeks, we can go to one water change a week. This is a system that I've been using for many years now, a water change system for new setups. It helps to prevent algae. It helps to just keep the system really fresh. 
dilute waste organics, which otherwise will trigger algae. And any kind of maintenance you're doing in the tank, you should always follow up with a water change as well. So bear that in mind. Okay, there we go, guys. Tank's filled up. We've turned the CO2 on, the filter's running, the light's running. And I think it looks really good. Obviously, early days now, plants are going to grow. Uh, it's going to evolve really nicely. Martin's employed uh, a guy doing separate maintenance on it. So I've had a chat with him, Andy. And I'm very confident that this is going to evolve into a beautiful aquascape. I think there's some important lessons here. So it was Martin's idea to use the Aquascape 900 at Aquarium Gardens for inspiration. And I was very happy to do that. And actually, I've, I've learned a lot today by doing that. It's not my usual style. I think there's something to be said for that. You know, step out of your comfort zone, do something that you're not necessarily entirely comfortable with. Use different materials to what you normally use, use different plants to what you normally use. And you can create something that's still beautiful and you get more of a reward from that because, you know, you've stretched yourself, you've stretched your creativity and then, as they say, once a mind's been stretched, it never returns to its original size. So I think there's a lot to, to learn from this process and I'd encourage you guys to step out of your comfort zones as well as I have today. So I wanna say uh, thanks so much to Martin for hosting me in his beautiful home, to his lovely wife, Steph, to Andy as well. And I'm really excited about seeing this one develop. I'm hoping Martin's gonna invite me back for a cup of tea and for an update video maybe in a couple of months or so. So I hope you enjoyed that guys, really enjoyed bringing it to you. As always, really appreciate you watching this video. You take care, keep on escaping. Cheerio. I'm really happy you like it and I really like it too, so. One of the tests I give myself is would I like it at home? Yeah, yeah and I would. And I'm actually a bit jealous. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think it's better than your one. Yeah. yeah. Um, they always are. <laughs> it's a good way around though. It's a good way around to have it, isn't it? Yeah. Please do. Get the, keep the customer happy. Yeah, good. aquarium or anything yet, have I? Well, I think I'll do it all at the end. Yeah, this will make a nice outtake actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll get straight into the scaping I think. So now it is... <sighs> Start again. The brain fart. <clears throat> Boom, that was better. <clears throat>